And she got valuable time as a freshman as well. Um, she's one of those keys to the game, if, you know, if, uh, that front line experience for Trinity. And this will be the first free throw of the game. Have a great crowd building here. I mentioned that earlier, but we have the boys game coming up here at five o'clock and, and Trinity traditionally always puts a lot of people in this gym. It's got great tradition in it as well. Well, for a Saturday afternoon game, the crowd's just, just, just still coming in at this point. Schrand to the line, dishes. Morgan Clunk missed and the rebound goes to Tori Blackburn. Underneath for two. Jody Mag Josie McGash. Josie may be the toughest matchup on, in the inside for either team because if she gets the ball in a position, she either foul gets fouled or scores. From the outside, Schran tied at four. Racehorse basketball here. Back down the other end. Kunz missed. Another rebound. And here comes Schran back the other way. Tied at four. Morgan Clunk missing. Ball batted out of bounds. It'll stay your Catholic basketball. Yeah, I think the girls are getting out their early game nerves, rushing a little bit. They're going to settle down. And I'll tell you what, Greg, it's just fun already watching Katie just dissect the Trinity defense. Rebound comes to Magash, stolen away. She blocked it again. Boy, she is tough down there. That was a good no call by the officials to let the girls play. Betts White backed it off and it'll go out of bounds and it'll go back to York Catholic. You know, the mid pen officials and officials in general get, get hammered a lot, but I'll tell you, the, the mid pen officials, I think, do a tremendous job of being consistent. Yeah, we talked about that last year, and uh, I like it when they let them play. Here's Schran again. Good offensive rebound by Clunk. Kicked it back to Schran, and we have a travel. Don't see that a lot from Katie Schran. Yeah, but you also don't, you, I'm looking at the jump shot. You don't see many girls jumping two and a half feet off the floor in a jump shot. No wonder she's going to major college. Katie Schran is head of the Vanderbilt University. I'm confident after watching her, Greg, for the first few minutes, I couldn't guard her. <laughs> I don't think I know I couldn't guard Betts right. And she's got the basketball. Not guarded by Charlie Fortney. <laughs> Misitano. Back to Betts White. To the baseline. Kick it back out for Anna Kuntz who drives and draws the foul. Your Catholic's going to have to do a better job of denying the entry pass. They're allowing the girls to get it and then playing behind, which is, which is a no-no. Uh, but they're, they're playing uh, percentages here. You front, they throw over top, you play, you play behind, and, and there's also some disadvantages both ways and advantages depending on how you execute. Anna Kuntz gives her team a one-point advantage midway through, almost midway through this first quarter. Six-four Trinity advantage. Rachel Forjan, who is normally the floor leader. Katie Schrantz put the ball up a lot today. And she's called for traveling again. Yeah, Rachel had 17 last night against West York in that romp, uh, and the romp against West York. Um, so look for her to be a, a factor as well today. Little full court pressure. Miss Atano hits from the outside. Her first two, and Trinity's up by four. Well, in, in that, that's, that's what they need. They need, by committee, those wing players, uh, Blackburn and Mesotown, need to give a little bit of what Murray gave this team last year. Schran lost it. York Catholic got it back. Good pressure by Ashley Betts White, forcing a turnover. Now, Ashley knows how to angle her body, Greg. Um, she, she knows how to force the turnover. You can tell she's been, she's been out here for four years doing this, and it shows. And Trinity has forced six York Catholic turnovers in less than four minutes. And 
And there's one by Trinity. Schran takes it herself, blocked by Betts White, but a foul. So Katie Schran will go to the line. She's got all four of your Catholics points so far. And doesn't have a fifth yet. And second for Katie Schran. And she's got five, all five of the York Catholic points as they put on some pressure as Ashley Betts White brings it across the timeline. Well, interesting move by Coach Bankos to have Sharan now guarding Betts White because, you know, you don't want your star player getting in foul trouble. And Katie's going to have to just be careful on how she guards Ashley, not to pick up any cheap ones. Shay Klein comes into the Trinity lineup for Jody McGash. And it's Brianna Betts White sister of Ashley. She's just a freshman. And she will see her first action. So to replace the Murrays, we have the Betts Whites. Schran goes around. Kuntz cuts the lead to one. I understand why Coach Britton would have Anna on there a longer Defender against Katie to make it tougher, but Anna needs to, to, to extend those arms and play a little more step back. Uh, Katie Schran's the type of player that thrives off of getting up on her and pressure her. That's not a good 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 plan. More pressure by York Catholic, and it will stay Trinity basketball. Remember, this is only the second game of the year for York Catholic, just the first for Trinity. So Charlie is still getting there. I mean, they've been playing against each other and maybe some scrimmages for the last three weeks, but. This is uh, only the first game situation for Trinity and only the second for York Catholic. Oh, and how about this for high school basketball live to be able to start out with this kind of, uh, these two teams that are top in the state in uh, preseason. Well, it'll go back to York Catholic on the turnover. 8-7 our score, we approach